Welcome to Move Church. Thanks for joining us for this week's message. We pray this message will both move and inspire you to make a decision into an authentic relationship with Jesus Christ. This relationship is where you obtain freedom and will help value your purpose and give you the power to engage your world. Now to the message. How we doing, Move Church? We doing all right? Yeah, we doing all right? Good to see you. Good to see you. Praise God. Amen. It's good to be back and uh, uh, away for a couple of weeks, but we're glad to be back in the house of the Lord. Glad to see you. I want to look into the camera and give a big shout out to our Move Church family that's not here. Can everybody here in the building put your hands together and welcome our Move Church family? We miss you. We miss you. Amen. Wish you were here. Hey, welcome to week number one of a three-part series that I'm calling Encountering God, A Heart of Worship. And so we're going to start a new series today uh, around what we're, the season that we're entering in as of today, 21 days of prayer. And I want to, um, we're going to do a series on worship really uh, for the month of August. Just, we want to just let God know that we just want him more than anything else that we can get. Can I get an amen? Somebody. Like we desire more of him and less of us, and, and that's what this is going to be about. We're just going to focus for the next 21 days about setting things aside, putting things away, like reorganizing the list of our lives to make sure that God is at the top and, 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 and there's nothing else taking his place. So I'm very excited about this season, about this series. Uh, you know, one of my jobs as a pastor is, is to lead you, the church, through different seasons. And not every season is the same, right? Uh, and uh, every season is different, is a little bit, you know, and so uh, the month of August, uh, we're entering the season where we don't, uh, we don't have a single event on the calendar. There's not anything like big or major that's happening because we just want to make sure that as a church that we take this time together to go to the hillside where the good shepherd, Jesus Christ, would take his, she his sheep and he would take them and just teach them to, and lead them into the green pastures and, and, and the still waters. That's, we, I want to hear from Jesus and I want you to do that. And I want you to uh, just come in contact with him in a way maybe that you have not before. And so this is just going to be a time for you and I to just draw closer to him uh, to refresh ourselves, to submit to God, uh, seek God with all of our heart. Not, and, and listen, I'm not sure that if you feel this way, but I, I don't know. Uh, this June and July tend to be some of the busiest times. Like we take vacations, and I don't know. These are the months that I feel like that I'm less connected with God than normal. Because what happens oftentimes, I don't know if it happens to you, but, you know, we, we take breaks from our schedules, uh, you know, and, and many of us will, will take spiritual breaks too. And, and so what August is all about and what we're doing with this 21 days, we do it two times a year. We do it in January as we're starting a new year. And then in August, after June and July and all the hectic, right before school starts, which school is moving up now, my son starts this week. I mean, that's crazy. Huh? I, it used to be September, but, you know, and, and so, but we're still taking this time, right, just to dedicate and focus our attention strategically around this 21 days to let God know, God, I need to hear your voice. I want to be closer to you than I ever have been before. Amen. So I'm putting the busyness behind me. God, I need to hear your voice. Anybody wants to hear God's voice? Any God, anybody need more of God right now? Amen. And really that's what this 21 days is about. It is just, just setting things aside, putting our, our schedules aside, readjusting some things so that we can prepare for what God has in store for us. And so you're going to see on the screen, we, you know, about 21 days, uh, you know, we, we, we're going to be meeting, uh, well, Monday night prayer is every Monday night, but, uh, during this 21 days, we just invite you, especially, uh, if you can't make it every night, uh, you know, uh, other night outside of this 21, try to join us, uh, for 21 days of, uh, of prayer every Monday night, seven to eight. And then every Saturday during this 21 days for the next three Saturdays, we're going to be meeting from nine to 10 just to set this time aside to let God know that there's nothing more important than him. Are you with me, everybody? 
Amen. And so over the next three weeks, uh, during this encounter series, uh, you know, the focus is not going to be on the, we've got handouts for you. The focus is not going to be on the handout. It's not going to be on the teaching. Uh, I just want to create environments and, and maybe you've already noticed that some things are a little different. Uh, we only sang two songs. Our worship service was cut short because we're changing some things up. We've got crosses at the front of the building. Uh, we, we've got a table in the back with communion elements. Uh, we, we've got candles back there. Uh, you know, Jesus is the light of the world. In the Old Testament tabernacle, there was light. There were candles that were always lit. Jesus, we know, is the light of the world. Uh, and so we, you know, during, we're, we're going to create some space at the end of this message for us to take some steps and for us to take some moves that maybe we have not ever taken, right? Uh, you know, and we'll be here to pray with you. The, you can come and there's index cards and there's thumbtacks for you to nail issues or distractions or whatever you feel that you want to put on the cross. You will have that opportunity during the worship. We're just changing it up to let, you know, just to, just so that we're not just in the mode of going through the motions, but God, we're here because we want you. We need you. We need more of him and less of us. Are you hearing me, somebody? So let me talk a little bit about worship. And I want to start off today with a statement. And I really want you to grapple with a statement. And I'm going to challenge you uh, how you think about a little bit about certain things. And some of this is going to be tough. And I'm going to just tell you right now, it's going to be a bit uncomfortable for a lot of us. Just get ready for it. But uh, there's a slide that's going to be here. I, hopefully it's on the screen. Uh, and it says this, we all worship something. We all were like, even if you're not a Christian, you're worshiping something. Why you say that Mark? Because God created us to be a worshiper. Like you can't help it. And if you're not worshiping him and if you're not prioritizing him, I promise you, you're worshiping something like something is getting your attention is getting your admiration. Like it may not look like it does at church with hand clapping and singing out loud. Worship is love expressed. And in fact, let me say it like this. Here's how I would actually define worship. Worship is our response to what we value most. Amen. Worship is what you put at the top of your list. Yes. So all of you, all of you, including me, have something that is really important to you. It might be you. It might be your job. It might be your money. It might be your career. It might be sports. It might be gardening. It might be shopping. Like you have something that your life is devoted on and get it like you're thinking about it, you're dreaming about it, you're spending money around it, like you always want to do it. Something is consuming your mind. It's what you adore, it's what you long for, and I submit to you, it is what you worship. And let me be very clear, God doesn't mind us having other things in our life. He just has a problem when those other things get at the top of the list right and replace him, Amen. right? Because ultimately, we were created not to worship the things that he's blessed us with and the things in this world. We were created for one purpose, and that is to worship the one that created all things in the beginning. That's why we're here. But because we live in a world that is so consumed with distractions, Come on, I'm speaking to myself just as I'm speaking to you. That we from, tend to, from time to time, let other things co come to the top. Amen. That we're focusing more on them than we are him. So I encourage you this morning to think about with me about the choices that you're making. Yes. Me included. On the things that I'm giving my attention, my time, my devotion. And I'm asking you, is God at the top of your list? I maintain that from time to time, me included. I want you to know I'm, sp I'm speaking to me too. We replace God with other things. 
So like we're still showing up on Sunday and we're still worshiping God and we're still showing up, God, I'm here today. But there's other things that's getting our devotion, our energy, our time, our activity, our schedules. Come on, somebody. Honestly, that's how you know what you are really worshiping is where your time, your devotion, your energy, like where that's being spent, that's what you're worshiping. And listen, we have to be careful. I want to make a statement because whatever you're worshiping, you actually will become obsessed with. And whatever you become obsessed with, you will begin to imitate that. And whatever you imitate, you will eventually become that. And for some of us, we don't like what we're becoming. We don't like what we are right now. And if you're like Pastor Mark, I'm coming out of June and July, and I'm saying, God, I'm so thankful for, the, for, for, for August that I can just hit the reset button, that I can hit the refocus button, that you can get my mind back where it needs to be. Are you hearing me, somebody? Maybe it's something other than God, like, like whatever it is. What are you focused on? And listen, the Bible addresses this. He addresses the fact that in the last days that there's going to be a generation who will do what we're calling today, if you're taking notes, the not so great exchange. So like where God was, he's not there no longer because we end up putting other things in a higher priority. And I'm going to show it to you, Romans 1. It's a great chapter if you take the time to read it, but we're not going to take, take, take that time today. Romans 1, 21, for although they knew God. Can you say they knew God? They knew God. Come on, say it with me. They, they knew, knew God. God. This verse is addressed to people who claimed to know God. It was addressed to Christians. It was addressed to the church. These are people that said, I know God. They neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him, but their thinking, like their mind, their attention was somewhere else, became futile, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, like, man, I got my life figured out. I know what's best for me. Like, I know what's going on. Like they claimed to be wise, they became fools. Why? Because they exchanged, like they put something else in the place that he was supposed to be in. Come on, check it out with me. Every time you do that, your life will not work out. I'm just telling you that. Every time he gets taken away from the list, like one of my issues with our country right now, here in America, and really it's any uh, progressive thinking, civilized society, is people think I know what's best for me. And my question to you today and to me is how is that working out for you? How is that working out? Because we don't know. We sung about he's been faithful today. That song, God has been so good. He's so, so good. We are nothing without him. That's right, that's right. We can do nothing without him. Right. We live, we move, we have our being, not because we know what's how to do it and what's best, but only through him. That's right. Amen? That's right. And so just look around like in our wisdom, we become fools oftentimes because we exchange changed him for other things that we think that is more important. They exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like a mortal human being and birds and animals and reptiles to which some of you are saying, take me off that list, pastor. I ain't got none of them. I ain't got no statues. I ain't got no reptiles. You know what I mean? I ain't got no birds. I ain't got no golden calves right? <clears throat> Take me off that list. I'm, I'm, I'm safe on that one. One thing that comes to mind, like real quickly. It ain't a golden calf. But we can't live without them. Are you hearing me, somebody? 
Like the first thing we do when we wake up, it ain't call on God. It's to see what's happened on Twitter and see what somebody's posted on Facebook. Help us, Jesus. Come on, I know this is hard hitting. I love you, but it's August and we're going deep. Because we need God more than we need anything else. We need God more than we need anything else. I'd love to tell a joke. I'd love to tell a joke to just lighten the mood, but there's no way to make it funny about this transition. All right, I want to give you five things real quick uh, that that I think, and we're going to take an inventory of our heart, five things that we have substituted, uh, you know, and put in God's place. Number one is substitution. That's different for every one of us. Maybe, maybe you want to write that down. If you're taking notes today, maybe you want to jot that down, what it is to you. Like, what is it? that has gotten in the way. And all I know is that there is, there is that thing. There's that one or two things. Maybe it's golfing, maybe it's money, maybe it's your career, like you're just consumed with it. And for some of us, and I can't even believe I'm going here, this is pastoral suicide, but I'm going here. All of us know what's about to happen in the next few weeks. We know what's coming, football. Don't give me that look. Don't. I can't believe he's going there. It ain't no throne in my heart. It has no place. Yeah, right. Your car is covered with your God. Your house is covered with your God. You wear more t-shirts with your God. Mm. Listen, I'm the same way. I, I, I'm preaching to myself. I got my teams. Although I don't like mine right now, I still got a team. But if we're not careful, we will let that thing become so big that we are continually putting so much emphasis on it that God has replaced our money, our time, our schedule, our devotion. Is God against football? Absolutely not. What God is against is when we let football become greater, more important, more talked about in our life than he is. Come on. I maintain this morning. I think it's a God. I think football is a God. I think many times it gets the place to the place in our hearts where it becomes this all-consuming thing. And listen, enjoy it. God says, go ahead and enjoy it. But don't let it get to the place that it's greater than me. Amen. Which, by the way, like, like you, you know how I know that it's a God? We're going to talk about this in week three. <clears throat> if you read the book of Psalms, it describes to us what worship looks like to God. His worship, his language, clapping, shouting. Dancing, hands lifted, which what I'm trying to say is Saturdays look more like worship than Sundays do. Come on, somebody. Deuteronomy 6.14, do not follow other gods, the gods of the people around you. For the Lord your God who is among you He's a jealous God. And God is saying, man, I just wish that you would clap your hands for me like you do the Reds, the commanders. Man, I wish that you would show up three hours early for me. I wish that that you would do a tailgate party for me. Forgive us, God. It's another thing we substitute. Pride. Like sometimes we exchange true worship with pride. In other words, we let our pride get in our way. And what I mean by pride is in your heart, you really, like you really do want to worship God. But when you show up to church, like you're afraid of what people are going to think. 
And you think that everybody around you is looking just at you. And I just can't be comfortable. And I, I don't want to be called a fanatic. Listen, listen. I grew up in a church similar to this. Actually, it was a whole lot crazier than this. I'm going to just tell you right now. Like, I learned how to pray by just praying that God would just let it be a normal Sunday. <laughs> that ain't Emma, don't go crazy today. Because I'm bringing a friend. Please, Lord, keep her seated today. Come on, somebody. You feel me? I, I, I'm very, I am very sympathetic to people that maybe come from a more traditional background or maybe new to Christianity. Maybe they're, maybe they're familiar with the book of Psalms. Maybe they, they, you know, they understand that there's clapping and, and, and there's shouting and, and, and there's singing and there's dancing. But God, I just thought that that was there in the word. Like, like I didn't know you meant that to be literal. I'm very sympathetic to people who visit churches like this because for some, it's an extreme opposite of maybe how they worshiped before. But I'm here to declare today that every one of us need an opportunity opportunity to encounter the most powerful, awesome God that died on a cross that loved you so much. We need a supernatural move of God's spirit and work in our life. And every one of us need a demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit. And we need to exercise that and not let our pride stand in the way of getting to where God wants us to be. And I encourage you this morning, like if you are intimidated, if you, if you feel that way, man, don't feel, like keep coming back. Because I promise you, you stay around here long enough. Like you, you're going to feel it in your shoe first. You'll feel it in your shoe and then it's going to work to your foot. And if you don't feel like, like, and they're going to be, a, like, I'm just saying, just hang around long enough. Just wait for that right moment. Wait for that right Sunday. Wait for that right song. Wait for that. And I promise you, like, like, I'm going to do that hand. Today is my day. I'm going to do that hand thing today. You know what I mean? Like, like if you just got to do it like this, just do it like this. Just do it. Nobody, nobody's looking, like we think people are looking, but nobody's looking because we're all focused on him. It's not about me, it's about him. Come on, somebody. Come on, I promise you, like nobody's staring at you. So don't let that interfere. Like it's, I, I just want to encourage you, John 12, 42. Yet at the same time, many even among the leaders believed in him, but because of the Pharisees, they would not openly acknowledge their faith for fear they would be put out of the synagogue for they loved human praise more than praise from God. Let it not be said of us. God, I wanted to worship I really wanted to, like I, like I had it in my shoe, but I just couldn't let it get to my toes. You know what I mean? Mm -mm, let, never let it. Here's another one. Hedonism. Hedonism. You need to know what that word means. Hedonism means belief that pleasure and happiness is the goal of life. In other words, you measure how you're supposed to live based on how you're feeling. Mama. If it feels like you don't have morals, Mama. right? You just have feelings. Like you don't have choices, you just have feelings. Hey, don't judge me. That's how I feel. Mama. And listen, that is not a great place to live and camp out in your life because actually feelings will lie to you. Yes, yes. Feelings are will lie. You can't trust your feelings. And what Pastor Mark has come to tell you as we enter into this 21 days of, uh, of prayer is, is nothing, there, there's nothing better than being in God's presence Amen. and understanding. Like, like, I'm not longing for a feeling. Like, we don't do all of this to create an opportunity for you to get a feeling because, listen, I'll be honest with you, there's sometimes, like, I don't feel like getting up here. All right now. All right now. Like, like, if I operated on feelings, I don't feel like it oftentimes. 
But I got to do it because I know that he's worthy. I got to do it because I know he's worthy. Like we're not here to get, give any, any of us a feeling because he deserves your worship. Amen. Amen. He, deserve, he deserves your worship. He's worthy of your worship. It's not about how I feel. It's about God, how good you are. Like it's not about I don't like that song and the lights were the wrong color and, and, and the music was too loud and, and, and I'll just wait till the next time. Like we're not here to get into our feelings. Amen. We're here to glorify God. Hallelujah. We're here to magnify the one Hallelujah. that died on a cross for us. Amen. Hebrews 13, 15, through Jesus, therefore let us, con everybody say continually. continually. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say continually. continually. Let us continually, not when I feel like it, not right now. continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, yes. the fruit of lips that openly profess his name. In other yes. words, Hallelujah. I'm not waiting till I feel it because I'm going to do it because he deserves it. Amen. I'm going to do it just because yes. of his goodness. Are you feeling me sometime? Come on. And, it, 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 and, and listen, it's better when it costs you something. That's why he says, Offer to God a sacrifice. What is a sacrifice? I'm laying something down. I'm giving something up. Are you following me? Amen. That's what God likes. I do it because he likes it. Amen. He created me to be a worshiper. Hallelujah. He created me Glory. to want to lift my voice, yes, to lift my worship to Hallelujah. him. Here's another. The next word is not really a word, but that's what we do in Mississippi. You know, we make up words. Spectatorism. You know what that one is? That's believing that I'm worshiping just by showing up to church. Check. Check that box off. I did it. I did it this week. Like worship is not a service. I do for God. Like we call them worship services, but worship, like I'm, it's not a service just by showing up. It's a service to him when I worship him and when he gets everything that I've got. And listen, if you don't feel comfortable, there's no pressure at all here at this church. You worship God however you want. Pastor Mark is just introducing you to the understanding that we all need to take next steps. That there's something that, that, that we, we can do greater, right? There's something. Listen, if I, like, like we're not supposed to show up and just be a spectator. Amen. We're, supposed, we're not supposed to spectate. We're supposed to participate. Hallelujah. If I tell my wife, Chantel, hey, I love you, but I'm not going to hug you and I'm not going to kiss you. How many knows that ain't going to go very well? You know what I mean? Oh, that ain't going to fly very well. It's going to be a long Weak, not not. It's gonna be a long, like long week. Like she needs me to express it to her. Amen. James four and eight says, "Come close to God, and God will come close to you." Yes, thank you, Lord. Come on, some of you, like some of you, are waiting on God. Mm, mama. That's not what script. James didn't say it like that. James says, you draw near to God. You come close to God. Amen. Then God will come close to you. Right. Like God's already taken, Jesus has already taken his step. Amen. He's already made his move. Amen. He died on the cross for your sins. Amen. While you were a sinner, he died for you. Like he's made his move. And what Pastor Mark is saying is we just need to be ready. Like he's already moved. Amen. We got to move. Like if God came closer, let me ask you this. If God came closer to you in the month of August, would your August be better? Yes. 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 Hebrews 10, 22, Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings whatever it is. And for some of you, like, you know, you just need, like, some of you need, need to get out of the bed early for the next 21 days and just before you go to work, make sure that you set some time aside Amen. 
to pray, read your word, devote your attention to him. Amen. Well, Mark, I'm not a morning person. Be a morning person for 21 days. Take a step. Amen. If it's uncomfortable, it's a sacrifice. God, it's, I'm sacrificing yes. because I want more of you and less of me. I'm sacrificing a sacrifice of praise. Like for some of us, like, like I don't know if I can, man, I don't know if I can ever be able to worship like her or I can't ever be able to do that. Well, listen, just, just if you can't, if you don't feel comfortable, just do it down low. Amen. If you don't feel comfortable, just carry the TV. You know what I mean? Just, just carry the TV. Carry the TV. And I promise you, you carry the TV long enough, it's going to go touchdown. You know what I mean? It's going to go, you'll be out there soon. Just, I'm saying, I'm, I'm closing this down, but you got to, like, I'm just challenging you. Take the next step. Take a step that you haven't done before. Do something out of the ordinary. Do something. The last one, talking about things we've exchanged our worship for. The last one is tradition. Tradition. Check it out. Did you know our tradition can become a hindrance and a replacement for the true worship that God is looking for. God is not into rituals. Amen. He's not into tradition. Man, I just need, like, I, I need a church where pews are. You know what I mean? Like, like, like I need a church where, like, like I can't do chairs. Mama. Like, like, where's the stained glass, Mark? Like, where's the steeple on this church? Mm. Like, God likes that better. And I'm just telling you, no, 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 no. God's not into tradition. In fact, it was the big, while Jesus was on this earth, tradition was the biggest thing that he was always against. Matthew 15, 3, Jesus replied, and why do you break the command of God for the sake of your tradition? Thus you nullify the word of God for the sake of your tradition. You hypocrites, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. God is not into rules, folks. He's into relationship. He wants a relationship with you. He don't want you going through somebody else to get to him. He wants you to understand that he is a high priest that you can run to that you can call upon, that you can run into his arms. He will be your advocate. He will be the one that will help you, that will strengthen you, that will empower you. So what does God really want? Like if this, like, like what does God want then, Mark? I'm, I'm got to wrap it down as the musicians come. What does God really want? He wants worship. Amen. I'm going to give it to you very simply. Psalms 50. David wrote it, but God said it. Are you hearing me, somebody? Amen. It's more of a prophetic psalm. Psalms 50 says, I have no complaint about your sacrifices or the burnt offerings you constantly offer. But I do not need the bulls from your barns or the goats, goats from your pens. I told you to do it, but that's not what I'm really after. For all the animals of the forest are mine, and I own the cattle of a thousand hills. I know every bird on the mountains, and all the animals of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for all the world is mine, and everything in it. Come on, somebody. When I pay my tithe, and I give of my offerings, God is saying, I wasn't broke. I'm not broke. <laughs> like, like it was never about your money. It was never about that. There's something greater and deeper than I'm wanting. Amen. It's not like, I, I, I don't care about your money. I want to know, do I have your heart? Amen. Like, I want to know what position do I hold in your life? Yes. I want to know if I'm number one or if I'm number 10 or if I'm number five. Like, where am I at? 
Like what? Like worship is giving God something that he doesn't already have. And what I'm telling you, worship is giving. Well, Mark, I thought God has everything. I thought God owns everything. He does. But he gave something up. And he put it in your hands. He put it in your possession. He gave something up. And he says, I'm going to let you decide if you want to serve me or not. I don't want any robots showing up at Move Church and doing it out of, because I tell them, lift your hand, clap your hand. I don't want robots. I want it to come from deep within your soul. I want you to worship me with your heart, with your mind, with your soul with your strength, with everything that's within you. I want you to worship me. Verse 13, you can be seated just for a moment. I got two minutes. Do I eat the meat of bulls? Do I drink the blood of goats? Make thankfulness your sacrifice to God and keep the vows you made to the Most High. Then call on me when you are in trouble and I will rescue you and you will give me glory. I want to give you three things very quickly. God wants you to begin your worship journey. Give God what he wants. Number one, thank him with my sincere affection. Just be like when you wake up, is God just interested in hand claps and lifting hands and like, is that what he wants? No, 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 no. He just wants you to be sincere. Sincere affection. When you wake up and see that thing we call the sun, God, thank you. Thank you. I worship you. Second Chronicles 16, 9. For the eyes of the Lord reigns throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. Come on, let that sink in. He's looking, roaming to and fro. He's looking on this earth looking for somebody that would be affectionate to him that's fully committed to him here's the second thing offer him the control of my life just just offer him the control god you're in control god it's sunday you're i want you to know you're number one before i do anything else this week your first. Romans 12 1 says, therefore I urge you brothers and sisters in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice. Come on, say it with me. A living sacrifice. Come on, say it with me. A living sacrifice. Holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. And then number three, include him in your everyday life. Yes. Include him. Do not follow, Deuteronomy says, other gods. For the Lord your God who is among you, he's a jealous God. What does God really want? He wants your worship. He wants your heart. He wants, he wants everything. Like what he's really after, here's what he's really after. What he really wants, he wants a relationship with you. He wants a relationship with you. So here's what we're gonna do. Every head bowed, as you stand to your feet, I'm gonna ask you to stand and then you can sit, you can do whatever, but the worship team is gonna sing. I promise you we're gonna get out of here at the same regular time that we always do, but we're just creating space we're creating opportunity. And Pastor Mark is just challenging you on this Sunday morning, August the 7th, to take a step that you haven't taken before. To worship him. Like, listen, we've got crosses, we've got pins, we've got tacks. If God, if, if you know that there's things that's distractions in your life that's keeping you from where you want to be, we've got Come down to the, to put, write it on the card. You don't have to put your name on it, just write it, nail it to the cross. 
We've got our prayer team is coming. I invite our prayer team to come. We're here to pray with you. We got communion elements in the back for you to do your personal, own personal communion. We've got candles that are lit for you to go if there's somebody that you feel as you're praying that, that, that you want God's light to shine in their life. Light a candle and, and for the light of Christ to shine and pray for over that person. Like, like we've got just pray in your seat. If you want to kneel where you are, you can stand, you can sit. I, there's no pressure. But we're just going to turn our attention to God for the next few moments we're just going to give him a sacrifice is that all right, everybody let's worship thank you Jesus